What's good everyone, it's your boy Natsu with another video for the channel. Welcome back to DMV Sports Zone and welcome to the first installment of Training Camp Nightly. We are going to cover day one, day one of training camp for the Washington football team. It's been a long time coming, of course. We had the entire offseason, all the trade speculation around getting a quarterback. Of course, we had the draft as well, drafting Jamin Dapes in the first round, Samuel Cosme in the second, so on and so forth. We had OTAs, rookie mini camp, and now we're finally here. Training camp has begun in Richmond, Virginia, and the Washington football team are about to embark on the 2021 season. The first thing I want to get to in regards to a recap of day one is the Landon Collins and Cameron Curl sighting as the starting safety tandem for much of training camp today. Um, Landon Collins, for as much as we bash on him for his coverage abilities and stuff, it is pretty spectacular that nine months, a mere nine months after his torn Achilles injury late in the 2020 NFL season, he's fully recovered. He's not going to be on the pup list or anything to start the season. And he's back where he started, right? As the starting strong safety for this team, Cameron Curl played a lot beside him today during, during the first day of training camp. And uh, I, I think it's going to be a pretty exciting safety tandem that we have here in D.C. Bobby McCain and Landon Collins as well were the starting tandem towards the end of training camp practice. But I think that group right there, Bobby McCain, Landon Collins, Cameron Curl, you can throw to Shazer Everett in there as well. Even Jeremy Reeves if he makes the roster. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of Jeremy Reeves, not just because I got an autograph out of him in training camp in 2019, but I think he played very well last year and even pro football focus noted that with their with their grades at the end of the season but i think that safety group overall is going to be very solid i also liked how benjamin st juice was the slot cornerback the primary slot cornerback when playing with the ones today i think he's going to be an absolute baller i mean even coach rivera during his press conference compared benjamin st juice to charles tillman who of course of course, Ron Rivera is going to know a lot about, right, being a former Bear great. And Charles Tillman, of course, Peanut Tillman, was a legendary cornerback. So that's very high praise for a rookie coming in to watch the football team training camp this year. But I think Benjamin St. Juice, I mean, he has the, the length that you want out of starting quarterback, uh, cornerback. He has the height that you want, the speed, everything, really. I mean, his his three-cone drill, which Jack Del always loves to talk about, was absolutely insane for a guy of his athletic attributes. So I think he's going to be an absolute baller for us this year and going to be a really good key in, in that secondary for Washington. Also, I want to get to Coach Rivera continuing to downplay Curtis Samuel's injury, his groin injury that he suffered towards the tail end of OTAs for the Washington football team. And while right now... Not too big of a problem. Even Coach Rivera said it's a minor problem. We do have to take a wait and see approach with this because how many times in previous off seasons have we seen players who've developed some minor injuries throughout training camp or even before that, and then ultimately it just the injury just continues, right? It flows into the regular season, and then the player misses games and stuff. So hopefully we don't get that with Curtis Samuel, right? I mean, he is our big time signee from this off season. Uh, he's supposed to be the starting wide receiver alongside Kurt, alongside Terry McLaurin this year. So hopefully he gets back sooner rather than later and he uh, mans his, his spot. But we shall see. We shall see with him. I also want to get to Logan Thomas repeating John Allen's sentiment as well in his presser today saying that he wants to be in Washington for life pretty much, right? And that makes sense. I mean, one, because last year was his best year by far and it was with the Washington football team and of course you have the the great tight end coach here in DC and great coaching overall but also because Logan Thomas much like Jonathan Allen is a Virginia native went to Virginia Tech for college so it's Virginia through and through and um yeah it's gonna be exciting to see him Jonathan Allen continue to be members of this Washington football team or members of whatever the name is is going to be <laughs> for this team for the foreseeable future and um, speaking of Jonathan Allen, Terry McLaurin, Jonathan Allen, true captains of this team. I'm not going to get into my whole vaccine sort of thoughts right on this video. You guys saw my thoughts on the Cole Beasley video, but I'll just leave it at this. Terry McLaurin, true captain of this team. You know, maybe he had qualms around the vaccine and stuff, but he took it because he knows it's going to cost the team later if there's an outbreak and he's unvaccinated and Jonathan Allen, same sort of mentality as well. So I, I would say they're two captains and I applaud both of them for, for doing the right thing, at least for the team. You can think whatever you want about the vaccine, but when it comes to NFL rules and the protocols this year, I mean, you're going to try to 
want you know your players to be vaccinated because it's going to be costly towards towards the end of the season when you're fighting for playoff hopes and stuff which i know this team is going to hopefully fingers crossed going to in december but i wanted to throw that out there another guy that uh surprised a lot of people including myself today in day one of training camp and that is deandre carter he got most of the reps as the starting wide receiver in the slot today deandre carter the same guy who a lot of people think is just gonna be a returner including myself and a lot some people even think is just gonna be a camp body he's gonna be cut by the end of training camp and maybe that might still be the case but i mean he got a lot of reps today with the starters in the slot alongside terry mclaurin you can say a lot a lot has to do with that when it comes to curtis Samuel right not being on the field but i mean deandre carter we shall see if he actually has a role on this team also, Adam Humphreys played pretty well today from, from reports in the slot. So I think we have a good wide receiving group, much like we have a group, good group on the other side of the ball in the cornerbacks, right? And Ryan Fitzpatrick, Terry McLaurin, I mean, the connection that we've been wanting to see throughout the offseason, my gosh, it was absolutely spectacular today. There is one particular moment where Terry McLaurin had a toe drag swag reception along the sidelines Ryan Fitzpatrick threw it perfectly Terry McLaurin didn't catch it nicely at the beginning but ultimately corralled it in and it was against William Jackson in coverage and you guys know how high I am on William Jackson I think he's going to be an absolute star if not all pro sooner rather than later in this Washington football team defense I mean he's shown signs of being a great cornerback in this league pro football focus had him as the eighth or ninth best man coverage cornerback in the entire NFL and I think they're going to play a lot of man in Washington this year and they brought him in for for that reason but I think Terry McLaurin man Terry McLaurin versus William Jackson III it's gonna be a fun battle over the next couple of days of training camp and really into the regular season right or the practices in the regular season it's 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 gonna be a very good battle it's gonna make them both sharper right in their respective positions and I think it's gonna be very exciting for Washington football tan fans over the next couple months and another thing i wanted to mention the people's corner jimmy moreland our guy was the player that corralled the first interception of training camp today off of ryan fitzpatrick and jimmy moreland is a guy that a lot of people think is on the outside looking in or at least is is moving his way down the depth chart right now with benjamin st juice being a member of the washington football team being drafted this year um and with some other guys as well and even Bobby McCain having some experience in the slot. You also have, you know, some other guys as well that have been brought in to play the slot, play the outside. And William Jackson the third, obviously, as well, who might even get some reps in the slot. Maybe a little bit less so there because he is primarily an outside, a boundary cornerback. But Jimmy Moreland caught the first pick. He's been showing out as he has in previous off seasons. It feels like there's, there's a good streak going for him there. And I think he's still going to make the roster. And, uh, yeah, I think he's a talented cornerback, and you can never have too many cornerbacks. I don't know who made that, that saying, but it's so true. You can never have too many cornerbacks. Cornerbacks are very talented, and I think us as Washington football team fans very much know that uh, based off of previous years of cornerback play here in D.C. And um, I also want to say that the right tackle composition is actually pretty interesting right now. Obviously, if you guys did not hear from yesterday, Cornelius Lucas did go down with COVID and he's on the COVID-19 list. So he'll be out for at least the next nine days now. Um, and the guy who's been able to replace him really in training camp, it's been a competition between Sadiq Charles and um, and also the second round pick as well, right? Who, who we drafted Samuel Cosme. So it should be an interesting little battle there at right tackle, at least until Cornelius Lucas comes back. But I think the and I've been saying this throughout the offseason. I think the ideal scenario would be for Cornelius Lucas to be that tie and Seki swing tackle type. And I know Louis T and I think the same way when it comes to that issue. And we also think the way same way when it comes to John Bostic being no more than a backup linebacker on a good team issue as well. But that's that's another thing for another day. Speaking of actually, John Bostic, Cole Holcomb, Jamin Davis as the middle linebacker, not as the will side linebacker right he's starting as the mike linebacker in this defense right now pretty much is the starting linebacker group off of day one of training camp we shall see if that continues over the next couple of days maybe kadeek hudson might get some reps as well but we we shall see we shall see and um the last couple things i wanted to mention kelvin Harmon, from what i've heard 
absolutely balled out today, caught everything that came his way, which is great to hear. And right now, I would actually give him the edge over AGG. Personally, I want Kelvin Harmon to make the roster over AGG because he showed me much more in 2019 in his rookie season with Dwayne freaking Haskins throwing him the ball. I rookie Haskins, no less. So I personally want Harmon to be on the roster. And we shall see the competition play out over the next couple of days in training camp. But it should be a tight one. It should be a tight one. You can also, can't forget Dax Milne and some other guys as well. Isaiah Wright, who actually had a pretty good first day of training camp as well guys that need to be thrown into the conversation and we shall see who actually ultimately wins that competition now last but not least taylor heineke from what i've heard also balled out training camp day one pretty much continuing his uh his spectacular play throughout this offseason thus far and he had a nice little connection with samus reyes down the field where samus reyes was i believe double or triple covered and he was able to corral the catch so reyes i mean we should see if he makes the roster right as a tight end our tight end group isn't very talented outside of Logan Thomas, so he does have a good chance of making it, but I think that connection might be an interesting one to see over the next couple of days, both for Taylor Heineke's hopes of potentially being a starter on this team, and also Samus Reyes' hopes of being a guy who makes the roster. With that being said, that is the official, official day one recap of Washington football team training camp 2021. And I do want to end off by saying something that isn't Washington football team related per se, but might be interesting for us come 2022, and that is the Aaron Rodgers press conference that happened today after the Green Bay Packers, I believe, first day of training camp, and you rarely see a quarterback or player, period, in the NFL speak as openly about everything he's been through the through the offseason and his relationship, his rift with the front office over the last couple of months, really dating back to February 2021, and it was a super interesting list, and I'll make sure to link it in the description, and hopefully you guys go check it out. But I mean, from the looks of it, 2021 might really be Aaron Rodgers' last year in Green Bay and Washington football team. I think we prepared ourselves over the last couple of off seasons, over the last couple of seasons, to really be at the point where we could go after Aaron Rodgers next year. And you guys know how I, I spoke of William Jackson III, how high I am on him, and some other guys on this roster, but... Aaron Rodgers, man, he's an MVP quarterback. I don't care how old he is. He's 38, I guess. But, I mean, I think he has at least a good four or five years in him of very quality play. And if we could bring him here in D.C., man, that's that's a Super Bowl. Super Bowl contender for you come 2022. But, of course, we have to get through 2021 first and see what we produce this year on the field. And I think we should have a very good season. And today was the start of it with the first day of training camp. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe to the DMV Sports Zone channel, where we try to post fire content on here as much as possible. Also, go follow our Twitter page and Instagram page, all lowercase DMV Sports Zone. And with that being said, have a great rest of your evening, and see you guys on the next one. Abdullah should have the next recap of day two of training camp, but yeah, it should be a fire video come tomorrow. So thanks for watching once again, and peace out.